Yo, what's up? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Wednesday, July 26th, 2023. I'm one of your host, Blessing, at LA Jr. Joining me is CEO Senior, a.k.a. WWE Superstar, Greg Miller. Hello, Blessing. How are you? Doing good. How are you doing, Greg? I'm excellent. Can you believe August is here? Which means I mean, it's not here yet. September is almost here. I mean, that's pretty far which away. Which means Starfield, which means October is almost here, oh, which God. means it's Halloween, baby! I mean, you skipped Spider-Man. Where's right Skelly? Where is Skelly? I've not seen Skelly in a second. I'm I put him in. The, I put, him in, I put him in the uh, stream room at one point when he went in there on day one to, to screw with the guys. But I don't mm. know. I don't know what's happened to him since then. Yeah. I mean, hopefully nobody took him out. <laughs> 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 Spider-Man. God. Oh no. There he is. Barrett's there got Skelly. Is. Hey, it's oh, Skelly. No. Oh, he's got a voice too. Nice job, Barrett. Oh, oh yeah, you missed the KFGD with me and Tim. Oh yeah. Skelly now is a recurring character. Oh great, I love that. I did uh, miss that one. Maybe or maybe not voiced by Barrett. Who knows? Man, Spider-Man. It's so close. Spider-Man. Yeah. October through the 20th, right? I want oh, to somewhere around there. 21st, 20th, 20th? Somewhere, somewhere around there. 23rd, 25th, <laughs> 24th. It's wild that like... You Same could, day as Mario. You could replace... 20th, October 20th. I was right. You could replace that with any video game coming out in the fall, and I would have the same reaction of like, Armored Core. Ooh, and no, Armored Core close. is next month. Yeah, but still close. This, yeah, August. Yeah. yeah. Like, Starfield. That's not that far away. Starfield. Yeah. Wait, Early two. access on Starfield is like September 1st. Yeah. yeah. That's real. Yeah. I don't like two... Real oh, Alan Wake 2 also October. <laughs> Alan Wake 2 is like three days before Spider Man, so October yeah, 17th. 17th. That checks out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The same day as I think Hot Wheels Unleashed. <laughs> it's another weird one where Assassin's I feel like Creed. right now we're not, a, it, by no means are we in a dead zone, but you're in like the last quiet period. Yeah. The where it's like now, the storm. exactly. Now you can go and play what you want to play and not worry about like falling behind or doing it. I don't, what, where are you with playing video games right now? Because I. I don't know what it is, and maybe it is my body like resting from the wave of video, wave sure. of video games you just sure. got, and then also anticipating how much I'm about to be gaming this fall. Yeah, to where I have games installed on my consoles, where games that I'm I've been excited to play, sure. games that have just come out, right? Like Rem, Remnant Two, yeah. uh, the, the guys have been playing, and you know I got installed on my PlayStation, and I'm excited for it ever since the reviews, but I can't bring myself to like jump into something new. Even last night, I booted up Jedi Survivor again. And was like, okay, after coming back from Disneyland, get back to I work. Did the whole thing. I think I'm in a Star Wars mood. Let me boot up Jedi Survivor. And I start playing 10 minutes of it. And I'm like, what if I just got in bed and started playing Marvel Snap instead? And that's what I did. Like, where are you at with playing video games? I have given in to my cardinal urges. All right. And so what I do is I just do what I want. I, you know what I mean? And what that means is it's either Diablo. Or like last night, where I had the best intentions of playing Diablo. Jen's uh, sister and her boyfriend are visiting. They they came in late last night, so last night, you know, I, Jen went to go get them. Jen's and, sister's boyfriend. Yeah, what did I say? Gotcha. Well, no, you said Jen's sister and her boyfriend. Gotcha. But which in my head, I was like, oh, Jen, Jen did I not? But did I not mention <laughs> World Thruple? Oh, <laughs> you know I, mean? I had no idea. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, they were coming in, so we were you know cleaning up the house and doing stuff, and they're staying downstairs where I game usually. So I brought the PlayStation Five upstairs with the best intentions of Diablo. Mm-hmm. I'm still obsessed with Diablo. You know what I mean? Diablo is still an amazing game. I had that moment of playing it. And granted, you know, we're, it's, you know, July 26th. So everybody cool your jets or whatever. But it's July 26th. And I had that moment of playing it. I, Jen and I started the season over the weekend. Then she didn't want to play. So I was just doing more stuff with my main character. And I was thinking about rolling another seasonal. Ca- and I was like, shit, fuck yeah, this is my game of the year. Because Tim had caught me off guard asking me that. And I was like, no, well, you know, I don't think it's Diablo. Right, right now it's Diablo. It's all I, I want to fucking play. Yeah. With the exception of last night, I moved the PlayStation 5 up there to do my whole thing. And then it was, I'm kind of tired. So why not just lay on the couch and or in bed, which I did both of, and play DC Heroes and Villains, mm-hmm. the match three game that I'm obsessed with right yeah. now. So yeah. I think for for what Diablo is for you, that's what Street Fighter is for me. Sure. Where I, when I beat Final Fantasy 16, I was like, oh man, certainly this is my number two game of the year. Mm-hmm. But then over the last month, every single day I go back to Street Fighter, I just hit um, Platinum in yeah. ranked as Luke, which was like a big thing for me because I didn't think I could get there the way I did. I got on a 12 game re- win streak. Whew, I was hot, on got the hot hand. Yeah, I was like, I was feeling it. I was awake. I had the energy and I could not be stopped for 12 games straight. And it was an exhilarating feeling. And it was just that thing where, I, where, where similar to you, I'm like, damn, okay, yeah, no, no, this is this is my number two right now. Yeah, oh, right, right under Zelda. And like, honestly, by the time I get to the end of the year, I'm sure it'll still be Zelda. But like, I'm not counting Street Fighter out because yeah, the more yeah, I yeah. play it, the more I'm just like, damn, I'm having such a good time. Yeah. consistently with this game, I can't believe how how well they they nailed it. They just gotta fix uh, the new characters when they add them in because 
the man they added it right now right they it's i think it's fixed now when okay. they first added in the first dlc character he had a move where if the enemy is in burnout stage which means like all their energy is down yeah um he has like a tornado move that he does that just chips away half your health and that was a problem sure. but uh, they took down the servers for a couple hours and so i believe it should be fixed now but okay yeah don't do that again don't Have do that again no no yeah. no yeah it's and that's the thing where it's like you know i still have I only put what I the two or three hours into Final Fantasy when I first got it or whatever uh, in between reviews. And so then that was the big thing of like, all right, here's the break. Here's where I'll really invest time in it. And it was the same thing of going to Comic-Con. Here's where I'll invest time in Zelda, which happened for the most part. I played it on the, fl the flight down there and then the flight home. But it was when I was in a hotel room or had downtime, I was playing the DC game. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, for Final Fantasy, it's like I want to play that. But I'm in just such a this is the problem with our job and games of service or just larger games where it's like there's still so much Diablo I want to do and I got to yeah. get that junk out of my system or I'm always I don't want it to tinge everything. I don't want it to be that I turn off Final Fantasy and I play 45 minutes I'm like, eh, and then I go to something else. Yeah. Yeah, that's gotta be in the mood. Exact same. Gotta be in the mood with, with with Jedi, with that juggling that with Street Fighter and Marvel Snap, and being like, well, this these things are infinite, and I'm having so much fun just going back to like, yeah, the things that give me comfort. Yeah, Whereas Jedi Survivor, I gotta be, you know, I'm gotta sit down, you know, put the monitor up, be ready to like get into some action. And when yeah. I'm playing it, it is fun. I am having a good time, even a better time. Like when I booted up last night. I was like, okay, this game is running great. Like, I don't know if it's the updates or if it's just the area I'm in, but oh man, okay, this is good. Oh man, I, yeah, the action here is really fun. But very quickly, I just, I just had that Marvel, like, I had the snap sound in my yeah. in my head, just playing. I'm like, well, man. there's something about that kind, that game where it is like, and it could be Diablo, it could be Snap, it could be the Match Three DC game I'm playing, right? Mm -hmm. Where it is just like, all right, I know all the systems and I know what I'm gonna do here, and so I want to go do that. Whereas with Jedi, there's a little bit more going on in terms of like what planet you're on, what enemy you're facing, especially with the pairing system in there. Like it's a little bit more, all right, I gotta be in the moment for this. Yeah. But I find myself right now, what I'm excited about, right? And it's because of recency and how close we are to it. But the reason I'm loving Diablo, right? Is building out the new character for that or finishing off all my things or expanding my map and yada, yada, yada. I think I'm going to be super prime for Starfield. I think Starfield is mm -hmm. going to hit just right. Of like, cool. I do. I, I am right now, in the mood for that what am i doing today what is that thing over there and that's what zelda is but i keep holding that off as my switch game on the on the road because again i'm going to SummerSlam next weekend so i'll yeah. have it with me there and yada yada gotcha. well greg before we get into the show proper i do want to give a shout out uh if you're watching the video version of course you see these figurines of shirtless miles morales and shirtless spider-man of course we're photo we, f we photograph these men often yeah we're been we're i would say i'm a big fan of shirtless miles morales sure sure also a big fan of shirtless spider-man i don't uh, know how you feel but i mean i like i like shirtless spider-man i like i like shirtless miles morales they're both fine gentlemen from what i understand yeah but yeah, uh, Matt Batson made these, right? Yeah, shout out to Matt Batson. Matt have we Batson. ever shown the video on that? I don't think we have. Is ba it Barry. possible, Barrett, to find the video and show it? Right. Because Matt Batson went above and beyond. As he always this. does. As he always does. But yeah, he cre he created these excellent figurines. I didn't get a chance to ask him how he did this. <laughs> like, what did you do? Like, did you buy, like, some Ken dolls and, like, re just re remix them into this? Across the Spider-Verse. <laughs> does he have a 3 you're printer? excited for Spider-Man 2 on PS5. But the real spider fun has only just begun. Your two favorite web slingers are swinging their way into your living room. That's right, it's shirtless Spider-Man and shirtless Miles Morales. They're like regular Spider-Man and regular Miles Morales, but they're shirtless. Hey, hey, Andy. <laughs> You've probably seen them on Kinda of Funny, Spider-Man PS4, Jake Johnson's t-shirt, and almost in Across the Spider-Verse. The Return! superheroes in the business. These shirtless webheads are the only Spider-Man action figures you'll ever need. Thank you for all your support of shirtless Spider-Man. Shirtless Spider-Man and shirtless Miles Morales. Steal your mom's credit card and order them today. Amazing. Oh yeah, you Amazing. incredible. Again, shout out Matt Batson. Thank you so much for these wonderful figurines of some of our favorite superheroes for now. Let's talk about some video game news. Greg, today's stories include... You think Insomniac's going to put them in the game? They got it, right? Shirtless Spider-Man was in the first one. I would say Shirtless Spider-Man is a staple. Yeah, I think it makes he's got to be. He was almost in the fucking movie. They got to put him in the next game, right? Is he not in the movie? Did we get clarification on what that I mean, was? no one... I know he's not in the movie. Okay. He got oh, to but the art in, book. in the art book. He's in the art book. Yeah. And then I guess big old Phil Lord was like, no. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or whatever the hell happens over there. I don't know how it works. I trust Insomniac more than I trust Brian Itahar, we trust you. Don't screw us on this, all right? And also, I'll tell you what, shirtless Miles Morales, mm -hmm. 
Like, you want to talk about somebody who came on the scene, made an impression, and never needed to come back? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Shirtless, Miles, Shirtless Miles Morales, one photo shoot, and he's, I, I can he's hit him up. I can hit him up and see what's he, what he's up I'm to. I'm surprised. I don't think he's that busy. I'm surprised they haven't made more appearances together. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, like, I, I don't know. It feels like, you know. Do you think they are a duo? Or, like, because they had that one photo shoot and just never worked together again. Do you think they might just be... <laughs> <laughs> maybe they broke up maybe yeah. they broke up yeah, yeah. i didn't yeah. think about that i didn't but, ask them about it but think about it like if the shirtless spider-men are like our spider-men for the bay area right that's yeah. a lot of ground to cover like sure. maybe shirtless sure. spider-man is hanging out in uh san francisco shirtless miles is in oakland <laughs> yeah shirtless miles morales is, like taking daily city in oakland who knows <laughs> who knows who knows shirtless miles know. like i don't want to ride the bard over there yeah, i don't want to i don't want to come visit yeah, the like, studio i don't want to go shirtless stay. miles gonna swing across the bay bridge you know how difficult that is like not not, not as many buildings. It's all water. It's a bridge. God dang. Well, Greg, let's talk about uh, video game news. Today's stories include layoffs at CD Projekt Red, Twisted Metal Peacock reviews, and more because this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every weekday at 10 a.m. live right here on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games and Twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games. We run you through the nerdy news you need to know about. If you're watching live, you can correct us when we get stuff wrong by going to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. If you don't want to watch live, you can watch later on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games or you can listen later on podcast services around the globe by searching for kind of funny games daily remember you can use epic creator code kind of funny on all epic store and epic in-game purchases like rocket league and fortnite to help support the channel to be a part of this show head to kind of funny.com slash kfgd to write in with your questions squad ups and more and remember patreon.com slash kind of funny will get you the show ad free plus a bevy of bonus content housekeeping for you a new kind of funny podcast is up all about the weird thing that Andy does in hotels. Plus, Greg's got beef with Alana. That's up over on YouTube.com slash kind of funny. And then over on Patreon, a new kind of foodie is up. And it's a kind of foodie episode that you don't want to miss. I got to bring back. Is it kind of drinky, foodies. though? Is it kind of drinky? It's is like that... have, like, foodies drink drinks. You got to drink One contestant is very upset. Man. One contestant is very upset about the kind of drinkiness of it. I'm just putting it out there. Chat, let me know if you feel like uh, questions about drinks could be asked on a foodie episode. And another contestant gets broken once again. <laughs> once again, exactly. What a surprise. Again, these kind of foodie episodes are the, are the most must-watch episodes of kind of foodie. And so I'm definitely going to bring them back in the future. But definitely catch this one. It's one you don't want to miss. Thank you to our Patreon producer, Delaney Twining. Today we're brought to you by Honey, BetterHelp, and Shady Rays, but we'll tell you about that later for now. Let's begin with what is, and forever will be, the Roper Report. It's time for some news. We have seven stories today. A baker's dozen. Starting with our number one, CD Projekt Red plans to lay off around 100 staff. That's roughly 9% of its team. This comes from Chris Golian at Video Games Chronicle. CD Projekt Red has announced that it will be laying off nearly 10% of its staff in the coming months. In an organizational update message posted on the studio's official website, CD Projekt Red CEO Adam Kaczynski states that the company wants to have, quote, teams that are more agile and more effective, end quote. And that after analyzing the teams in the company, the decision has been made that some are no longer needed, quote, We've carefully assessed all teams in the company in terms of their expected contribution to the delivery of our strategy, Kaczynski writes. There's no easy way to say this, but today we are overstaffed. We have talented people on board who are finishing their tasks, and based on current and expected project needs, we already know we don't have other opportunities for them in the next year. Quote, the outcome is the studio parting ways with around 100 people, which is roughly 9% of the entire team. This will not be immediate, as some employees will be let go as of late Q1 2024, but in the spirit of transparency, we've chosen to share the information now. We want team members to have ample time to process and adjust to the change, and we've also made sure to offer everyone a comprehensive severance package, end quote. In May, CD Projekt announced that it had laid off 29 employees after rescoping its Witcher spinoff game, Project Sirius. These layoffs mostly impacted developers at the Molasses F Flood, uh, the American studio behind Flame in the Flood, which CD Projekt acquired in 2021. Also in May, the company announced that its decision to wind down support for Gwent in 2023 would lead to around 30 Gwent team members also being laid off. Greg, this is not a new story, uh, a new story, um, as like in the last year we've heard this kind of story grow and grow and grow in terms of 
more and more game studios and tech companies, especially laying people off. Yeah, 100%. And it's always sad and it's always upsetting. And, you know, your hearts go out to every developer and person uh, from CD Projekt Red affected by it, right? As they try to find their footing and try to find uh, another job in a space that is increasingly tumultuous right now as we talk about economic headwinds. Um, and, and many times, and I think a lot of the layoffs we've talked about, bad decisions, right? <clears throat> I don't see... We don't, I mean, we're just going off this letter from Kaczynski, right? So mm -hmm. who knows exactly what's going on there. This doesn't follow the path of what we saw with like Niantic, where it was like, yeah. yo, we tried to be a telltale thing and put out all these different games. And then guess what? Nobody wanted that many games. So we have to lay off all these people we hired to make these games that you'll never see. This sounds more like the sad, but real, the sad reality, I guess, of game development slash running a business where, you know, you grow and you grow and you grow, and then you get to a point where, like, oh, shit, we don't have enough work for these people to go through, which is, you know, but poor management. And also kind of crazy, right, to think about, like, CD Projekt has been so clear about everything they are working on yeah. forward, right? Like, I'm on the Wikipedia right now. You can toss out Phantom Liberty, which is obviously imminent, but you assume pretty much done. But then it gets into the Witcher remake, which is with Fool's Theory, Project Hadar, which is with CD Projekt Red, where the layoffs are happening, Project Orion, which is at Pro CD Projekt Red North America, Project Polaris, which is at CD Projekt Red, and then Project Sirius, right, which is the Molasses Flood, CD Projekt Red North America you're talking about. Like, that's a lot of games that you have in production that you would assume it would be all hands on deck for so many of them. And granted, there's different stages of production, right? Pre-pro, actually production, anything you're doing after the fact, or even, you know, way internalizing what the next thing's going to be. It sucks, but it's, it is always that interesting thing when you see 100 staff has been laid off. Oh, shit. Roughly 9%. Holy shit. Yeah. You forget how big CD Projekt is, how big CD Projekt Red is, right? That if they're, that's 9% of the staff is 100 people, that's a huge team. And so I can understand where you would bloat on that to a degree maybe. And then as projects ramp up and shut down and do whatever, and again, you're getting ready to launch Phantom Liberty, that's involved with it as well. I'm not justifying this. I'm not saying it's okay. I do think we're in a better place than when I, you know, at IGN, I remember in what, the, the mid 20, to the 2010s-ish, plus or minus either side, where it was the... We, the people would ramp up on hiring, release the game, lay off all their contractors, ramp up on hiring, lay off a lot of their team. Right? And it was that was like the usual scale. And it was this giant conversation of like how there's no stability. I know there is still a huge conversation about stability in the video game industry for the people making your games, but it's not as, hey, this is exactly what the cycle is. Doesn't make this any easier. Doesn't make that mm. this is a problem that doesn't need to be solved. But sadly, this happens right when you have a business and things change. Yeah. And I, I think the way that is happening from what we can gleam and what we can read in this blog and in the story, you know, I think this is a better case scenario to where we've seen it happen before, sure. where it's all of a sudden like, oh, we've been laid off, the studio shutting down, no severance, yada, yada. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. them having this part where it is, this will not immediate, uh, this will not be immediate as some employees will not be let go as, as, as late as uh, Q1 2024, but in the spirit, spirit of transparency, we've chosen to share the information now. 100%. I think that's huge, right? Like I've, yeah. I have friends that like live in the Bay Area that are close friends of mine that um, work in the games industry that are developers that, um, you know, I've talked to them over the course of months and they've had this, you know, um, looming, idea of oh yeah eventually like i'm gonna get I, the I can, shoe's gonna drop yeah the, the, the shoe's gonna drop like i i know i'm probably gonna get laid off from this company soon because of just where things are at and like you know where we're at in the project right of like hey yeah we've ramped down on these things and this company is about to start trying to like lean people off um and in those same friends right have the story of yeah like oh uh, oh yeah like the shoe finally dropped i'm being laid off but i i I am not being officially laid off until four months from now. Yeah. And so I have that time to apply to other jobs. I have For that sure. time to figure out what I'm doing next. I have that time to continue making money and then start focusing on other things so I can figure out what my next move is. And I think that's a better way to do it. Also, them talking about, hey, we've made sure to offer everyone a comprehensive severance package. That is also very important because that doesn't always happen. And when it doesn't happen, it's very shitty. And yeah. so CD Projekt, having that available very good thing they're doing what they're supposed to do the thing that i think still the, the thing that surprised me that sticks out is the nine percent like the 100 people being la laid off one because obviously like you know our hearts go out to anybody that lo loses their jobs 100 people it's a lot of people to to lose their job and that sucks for of them course. but then also cd project red losing that much people or cd project losing that amount of people 
that's sizable. Like for you, does that speak to the company of CD Projekt at all and where they're at and like your faith or I guess your opinion on, on what these projects are? No, I don't get into a situation and get in the headspace of like you're laying off this many people is the company in trouble or are these games in trouble i guess more of the games than the company is what you're asking i think there's so many projects in motion right now that they can't they're not all in full-blown production and they did a little bit of that when they teased them if i remember correctly on the powerpoint slides of saying a little bit of like release windows and things like that i think if anything right you want a focus on what the next project is and i think again for CD Projekt Red be, or CD Projekt as a company being the cyberpunk team, right? Mm -hmm. They know better than anybody now what it's like to release a product that isn't up to their standards, the community standards, the audience's standards, and not deliver on their promises. So no, I think more than ever, CD Projekt as an entire parent company, let alone CD Projekt Red, has to know what their games need to be. And I would say that throwing more bodies at the problem isn't necessarily the solution yeah. right so i don't i don't i think it's kind of an apples and oranges in terms of like what this actually nets out for what it means or try to read the tea leaves for the games i think it's just the fact that cd project found a lot of success on the witcher obviously witcher 3 uh probably super staffed up for that obviously we called out the gwent stuff they've already gone through with you know the layoffs for that i think it's just that thing of like you ride that high you're 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 being a big success, you're doing a bunch of different things. You probably overstaff in some areas. Yeah. Well, we're going to see what happens with CD Projekt Red and those upcoming will. games. But for now, let's see what's going on with the Twisted Metal series on Peacock. With story number two, the Twisted Metal Peacock series is actually good? Question mark? Question what? Mark. This comes as a review roundup. Right now on Rotten Tomatoes, it is sitting at a 65%. I'm going to start off with Matt Fowler at IGN, who I gives it. You know him? I know him. Wow, that's crazy. You know, he's a grandpa. Whoa, that's even crazier, really. Yeah. yeah. Damn. He's out here reviewing Twisted Metals. That's a cool Well, I mean, grandpa. he's not a grandpa like, like how you think of a grandpa. He's like, you know, uh, he's a peer. Yeah. He's just like, you know, had his first kid young, and then this just happened. You know what I mean? Well, congratulations. Yeah. Wow. Uh, Why that, it didn't just happen. It's been a while. He's been a grandpa. <laughs> Still, congratulations. All right. Yeah, no, uh, Matt Fowler at IGN gave it an 8 out of 10 and says, Twisted Metal is absurd and hilarious in exactly the ways you want a dystopian cannonball run to be. Yes, it matches the game's crude humor, but mostly it springboards uh, from there and creates its own dark and warped wasteland sensibilities. During the backstretch of the season, there's a little bit of joke fatigue. But the demented tapestry presented here, grown from the seeds of the games and expanded into something workable as an ongoing series, is delightful. Mackie and Beatrice play characters you root for, but also love to see uh, love to see get into impossible situations. Meanwhile, Church and Joe slash Arnett provide the order and chaos. I still I still can't get over that um, uh, that character is played by Samoa Joe and. Uh, um, Will Arnett. Yeah, as well. Um, they provide the order and chaos out on the open road, making for a believable powder keg of violence at all times. This show is so, so dumb, as only clever people could achieve. And then Daniel Feinberg at The Hollywood Reporter uh, says, with its rave reviews, three-month window of cultural supremacy, and 24 Emmy nominations, HBO's The Last of Us gave, us, uh, gave all... Yeah, gave all subsequent game to screen translations an exhilarating new freedom. It's no longer necessary for an adaptation to bear the weight of an entire genre's credibility. Greatness has been achieved, and it's now fully acceptable for a video game adaptation to simply be decent. Peacock's new series based on the venerable and vers versatile Twisted Metal franchise is, and I mean this generally as a compliment, Quite decent. <laughs> <laughs> Twisted Metal lacks the budget and ingenuity to consistently live up to the game's sense of unrelenting mayhem, but its limitations make room for a solid character-based story to develop around stars Anthony Mackie and uh, Stephanie Beatriz. And then lastly, Ross Bonham at Collider says, Twisted Metal is a series that takes a while to get going and at times struggles with its tone that deviates from the games, but Smith and his team have made a show that is campy, cheesy fun. By the end of Twisted Metal's 10 episodes, it's hard not it's hard to not want more and to be fairly impressed with what this series has set up for its potential future. Busty, <laughs> you always believed. You always believe. I, I believed, but like I didn't believe that hard. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I believed as a bit. I didn't believe literally, and I can't believe literally this. Well, these is reviews also seem like they're in on the bit. Oh, yeah. Everybody's exactly. like, yo, it's decent. Yeah. But you like, know, this is best case scenario because when you announce a Twisted Metal show and you show and you <laughs> cast Anthony Mackie as the lead, right? yeah. you cast Will Arnett and you have this like goofy premise to it, I would hope that the thing they get right is that the show 
is in on how ridiculous it is and the show leans into this is a dumb premise and a dumb idea yeah. but we're gonna we're gonna take it and make it um funny and campy and it seems like they've succeeded with that for the most part for sure like 64% or 65% on Rotten Tomatoes is higher than I would have assumed for this thing. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, full disclosure, I did the Twisted Metal panel at Comic-Con where we screened the premiere episode. Uh, uh, so, like, obviously, you know, that was a hosting gig. You can take my opinion with a grain of salt. When they sent the screeners over for it, I put it on the TV in the in the area, right? Because when I signed an NDA, kind of funny signs an NDA. Mm. And we were like, oh, let's see how bad it was. And that first 10 minutes of the episode, like, oh, this is pretty bad. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, there's a Foot Locker joke. The uh, the CG's not that great, blah, blah, blah. And I turned it off, right? And then I went back to work or whatever. And so then when we got closer to the panel, I was like, all right, actually, I'm going to sit down and watch these because, you know, there's been a whole thing that happened with the panel. And so I watched the pilot all the way through. And I was surprised that by the end of it, I was like, okay. Mm -hmm. It was like, yeah, like it's a jarring intro to a world but it's them establishing their rules and what their cg is going to be and yada 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 and by the end of it i thought they did a good job like i was when they introduced nev campbell as like uh this you know she runs new san francisco or whatever they call it like she's like this you know uh, like shadowy bad guy or whatever and it was like okay and then anthony mackie actually found even though way campy and way over the top, as you saw, I think in the first five minutes you watched yeah. with me like very over the top and campy. by the end of it they gave it like oh okay like it's like again like I'm not I did not sit down and rush out to, wa to watch the next nine episodes but I was like oh you know what okay they I'm not sold but it's like my first impression you go through it, and you're like oh this is the world like what they're talking about here if it's like it is this campy thing it is this you know we're gonna beat you over the head with these jokes yada 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 but like when they introduced Thomas Hayden Church I thought he was super scary I liked that a lot their, their introduction in the pilot episode of Sweet Tooth I thought was fun like oh, I was yeah. like okay do these reviews make you want to uh, make you excited to watch the rest of it? No, not really. No. Like it's like it's for me definitely one of those like maybe I'll have it on in the background while I do something else eventually, but that's just how I am with TV. Like it's you know what I mean like Last night I was sitting there playing DC Heroes and Villains, right? Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> are, you, are you constantly playing DC Heroes and Villains when yeah. you're not doing anything yeah. else? Yeah. <laughs> if I'm not playing Diablo or taking care of Ben, pretty much. Uh, and it was that thing of like, I realized too late in the night, I'm like, oh, fuck, right. I was supposed to watch more Secret Innovation tonight to get ready for in review. And it was just that thing of like, that I enjoyed what I've, I've had, I guess now that the finale is out, I have two episodes of Secret Innovation to get ready for MCU and review tomorrow. And it's one of those things I enjoyed watching it the night before all of it in a row right but then it, like last night i was like i just don't want to watch something i don't i want to play games i don't want to watch something this is how i am if yeah. i have the free time i'm usually not like well, i want to go watch something yeah like i'm on the one hand we're going to see oppenheimer tomorrow right mm -hmm. and on the one hand we're going to the alamo draft house because it's the best experience oh, in the yeah. world so i'm excited for a martini but on the other hand i'm like oh, fucking three hours What's the three hours, hours? Not i know really i love really nolan really movies like i love nolan it's just like on my hierarchy of what I can do with my free time, watching something is just so not usually what I like to do. Yeah. I, I've been excited for the bit and ridiculousness of, uh, of this. And I'm, I think I'm in a similar place as you right now, just in terms of what my mood is, yeah. where I've been hearing about this show, The Bear, for oh. <laughs> forever now. Yeah. And, I, and the fact that I haven't started it yet pains me. But also, I just know that right now I'm not in the mood to watch TV. Like, yeah, I can't yeah, turn yeah, on yeah. my TV You're to watch You're not in the to mood to get anything. real sad, Blessing? Real anxious, real anxious. Have that tightness in your chest as you watch this poor guy. I mean, by the time I finished Oppenheimer, I think I got my fill of that. Yeah. <laughs> I was real sad at the end of Oppenheimer. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't have a happy ending. <laughs> Let me tell you, no. <laughs> Seems like it worked out all I'm right. I'm gonna spoil no. the movie for you. They drop a bomb. What? <laughs> yeah, no. and it's pretty dark. My favorite meme that's coming out of it is like Twitter, where it's like the Oppenheimer will return at the in oh. the post credits. Oh, yeah. Mine was uh, mine was the article. Somebody quotes a screenshot of the article of like, is there a post credit scene to Oppenheimer? And the quote <laughs> tweet was the person saying, "Baby, you're living in it." <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's really good. That's really good. But in a world where like I can't bring, like I, I'll be ashamed. If I watch through Twisted Metal and Peacock before I watch The Bear, like I don't want to do that. Like I, I feel like I but gotta start prioritizing. But my here's TV. the thing: Do you? Because I feel like P Twisted Metal on Peacock is the perfect. We always talk about podcast video games. Mm -hmm. When I talk to Joey, when we talk about Diablo, her and Mike always talk about something else they have on on the on a second screen that they're playing or watching, right? Yeah, and, I guess watching. And so that would be the thing. I think Peacock would fit that mold pretty well. Of, or, uh, Peacock, sorry. Well, if you're, if you're, remember, if you're subscribing to Peacock, <laughs> WWE, this is awesome. It's a great show I host. You should watch. Um, yeah, Twisted Metal would fit that mold because, like, I, with my, when I watched the pilot to get ready for the the panel or whatever, I was doing email while I did it. Yeah, I like, had it on the big screen, but I was doing it like you can check in, check out, see what's up. Okay, that actually, yeah, that sells me a, a bit on it more because I think that's how I 
well, that's how I played a lot of Inscription lately, and that's, sure. like, that's how I play a lot of card yeah, games. Yeah, the bear is very much like... You gotta focus That's in. destination viewing, right? Yeah. That was like... Bear is like succession for me, where it was like, I, if I'm, when we put that on, it's like, I'm not doing anything else. I'm not playing DC Heroes and Villains, even yeah. though, let me tell you, yeah, I got a pretty good squad. I got Halo out of the drop last night. Oh, shit. She's out Halo? there throwing her another five star. Is that, great. A, is and that I, a DC character? Yeah. Halo? And I'll be honest with you. Uh-huh. I didn't fucking know who Halo was. <laughs> yeah. I, was like, I, saw, I... I saw Halo in the key art. And I was like, who the hell is this? You know what I mean? But I'll bust it out. I'll show you. I got well, the only four star I'm using right now is Batman. Mm. So I'm doing pretty well there. Okay. Okay. I'm hoping the next where, Batman where? introduced, they'll make a five star. What is the bear on? Is that FX? Is that Hulu? Yeah, that's, FX? Well, yeah, FX Hulu. Okay. Sweet. Well, FX has good shows. Um, Peacock has good shows. But you know where you can find some even more good shows. Patreon.com slash kind of funny. Over on Patreon.com slash kind of funny games and kind of funny. Uh, we have exclusive shows for you like kind of feudy, like the next gen podcast and more. But you can also go there to get the show ad free. And speaking of ads, let us tell you about our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by PayPal Honey, the easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. Did you know it only takes a few seconds to get it? That means if you go to add it to your laptop or iPhone right now, you could be done before this ad read is even over. And you know what else works fast? Honey's deal finding abilities. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. When you check out, the Honey button appears. All you have to do is click apply coupons. You wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons it can find for that and then if it finds a working coupon you will find the prices drop we've saved thousands of dollars thanks to honey buying costumes props tech over the years honestly not using honey is just silly honey doesn't just work on desktop it works on your iphone too just activate it on safari on your phone and you get to save on the go getting honey seriously only takes a few seconds and by getting it you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this show you can get paypal honey for free at joinhoney.com slash kind of funny that's joinhoney.com slash kind of funny this episode is brought to you by shady rays take on the sun with gear built to last our friends at shady rays have you covered for the warm weather ahead with premium polarized shades at an affordable price durable frames and extremely clear optics for outdoor adventures just like mike likes them shady rays offers the most insane protection in all of eyewear every pair of sunglasses is backed by lost and broken replacements if you lose or break your pair even on day one they told us they will send you a brand new pair no questions asked and every purchase supports the shady rays impact program which works directly with nonprofits and their communities to empower and make adventure accessible for all walks of life from childhood cancer patients to young adults with serious health conditions exclusively for y'all listening right now shady rays is giving out their best deal of the season go to shadyrays.com and use code kind of funny for 50 percent off two plus pairs of polarized sunglasses try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 250,000 people Again, that's shadyrace.com. Use code kinda funny. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. We all know life can be hard. It's so easy to get caught up in what everyone else needs from you and never take a moment to think about what you need from yourself. I know from experience how often it just seems easier to care about others and keep it moving. But when we spend all of our time giving, it can leave us feeling stretched thin and burned out. Therapy can give you the tools to find more balance in your life so you can keep supporting others without leaving yourself behind. Some of my best friends use BetterHelp and love how helpful it can be for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapist anytime for no additional charge. For more balance with BetterHelp, visit betterhelp.com slash kind of funny today and get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash kind of funny betterhelp.com slash kind of funny now bless i just gave you the demo a live demo of dc heroes and villains how you feeling honestly yeah i'm kind of sold <laughs> it's free to play i'm kind of sold. jump in and try it, it. what can go cool. wrong i didn't know match three puzzle games came this far but hey you know technology goes. there's a lot here. going on here i gotta try to beat raven before well, you can read the story i'll listen but i got you know i can't right, good luck on fighting I can't raven. middle on that. i got her down half health it's gonna be right. we got her well hey you got randall savage on your team vandal, like, vandal. No, <laughs> vandal. <laughs> you got randall savage <laughs> randall vandal you got him on your i got it yeah <laughs> story number three project l the league of legends fighting game lets you play 2v2 with four players this is chase jason finelli at GameSpot. after lying dormant for seven months project l is back in the spotlight with a major update 
Not only will the game be playable at EVO, the largest fighting game tournament in the world, next week, but it'll show off one of its key modes, Dual Play. Dual Play builds on Project L's 2v2 match format with, with a simple concept. Instead of one player controlling both members of a team, Dual Play will allow two players to team up, with each one assigned to only one member of the team. This means that a two-player fighting game will now open up to four players in a Dual Play match. Executive producer Tom Cannon hosted a new explainer video which goes over the new gameplay mode in detail, which includes a few system for extra synergy. The video also shows off raw gameplay with the full user interface, health bars, super meters, and more for the first time ever. Along with the explainer video, Riot also released a video featuring a full match played by the game developers. The demo shown in the video will be playable on the show floor at EVO 2023, August 4th through the 6th. Great, how excited are you for Project L? I cannot wait. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, I'm, I'm okay. You? I'm very excited. For yeah? That. Yeah. Talk to me. What's, what, what's, I mean, I know you're the fighting game mm -hmm. guy. Uh, so, like, when you look at this, what speaks to you about it? So, the art style looks great. Yeah, the art style looks great. Uh, like, pulling back a little bit, I think the, the exciting thing for me about Project L is that it's a fighting game being made by Riot. Mm -hmm. And Riot is a, is a, um, a game studio that excels when it comes to like when when riot zeroes in on a competitive space yeah, yeah, yeah they excel at it right and so like they saw a space for valorant with the competitive uh, tactical shooter they put out valorant and it blew up um uh project l being their uh, foray into fighting games it being this free-to-play thing which is you know like pretty novel for the fighting game space and them having that riot touch to it i think has a lot of potential because even th with dual play that sounds like a very exciting thing for me, right? That reminds me of being at a friend's house playing, I believe it was Mortal Kombat 9 that had a similar thing of 2v2 tag team matches sure. where you'd be you and a friend versus you and another friend or versus okay. two other friends. Yeah, yeah. And that was such a fun way to play, but a lot of fighting games are built around that in a very like meaningful way. Usually it's just say, hey, here's an additional, additional mode for you to play. But sure. them going all in on it, them showing off the, the synergy stuff, and you know having these qualities that make you have to strategize with your teammate of all right i'm going i'm going this character you're going this character and like this is how we're going to play i think that's a very smart way to do it and i think for me generally i just like more competition in the in the fighting game space you know usually and not doing the same head to head right like yeah. so it's not every game is a 1v1 v1 v1 right exactly like, yeah. and so i think that opens things up in a very interesting way for competitive i think that might be for an even more fun uh, evo where you do have this tournament that now instead of yeah just 1v1 tekkens it is hey um project l is up and it is 2v2 like maybe they have a 2v2 segment or like that along with a 1v1 tournament as well like they sure. can double dip in that way sure. right or they can just go all in and go hey duos is the main way we're playing this game and i think that is refreshing different and sounds like a fun time if i am hitting up mike or whatever friend i have that yami. might be playing hit up yami and be like I don't know if Yami's added into fighting games. We'll be like, Doesn't yo. Doesn't matter for the story. <laughs> yo, I'm hopping online ranked. We're going to lock in. Let's sit down for an hour and, like, you know, fight some people. And that sounds really fun. And I think that just makes it very different, especially for, sure. for a game that I imagine will be out in the next couple of years. Let's say it's out next year. I hope it's out in the next couple of years. Yeah. <laughs> if, it's, if it comes out next year, right, you're talking about that, then Tekken and Project L being the two big, uh, big fighting games there. And that, those are such different sides of the spectrum. Sure. That, Sure. Again, I think makes things exciting and, and, and more interesting in the fighting game space. And so, yeah, I think it's I think it's a really cool thing. And um, Barrett had the gameplay up earlier, seeing the UI and stuff for the first time. It looks really good. Like, it, it is. Looks, it's crisp. It's very crisp. The art style in general just looks really good. I mean, the UI looks what I would expect it to look like. It has almost like a um, Arc System Works sort of style. Sure, but it. like then the the almost comic book art they have, I really dig. Yeah, and there's like a level of clean. Like the, the UI is clean um in a in a way that like that, that i uh, that i appreciate right it just looks good and so yeah i can't wait to see more of this i can't wait to see what people think about it when they get their hands on it and this is Evo. free to play this, this will be free to play when it very actually cool. comes out very cool where are you right now with hype for mortal kombat i'm excited for mortal kombat um the more they show of it like the trailers have been excellent there was a yeah. trailer out last week where they showed off a few more of the characters they're adding and then of course at comic con they mm -hmm. announced the dlc characters that that they're adding in I think they're treating it in all the right ways. The demo that I did at Summer Game Fest, the like actually controlling that game and fighting in that game, along with there was like a closed beta thing that happened right afterwards, or the network test. Um, I'm concerned about like uh, transitioning to that game after playing so much Street Fighter yeah. and how different Mortal Kombat feels, which is so funny because historically I am more of a Mortal way, Kombat right? person. Yeah. 
But when I play Mortal Kombat now, it, it feels a bit more sluggish and weird. And it's also very punishing and, com and um, combo heavy in a way that Street Fighter isn't. And so I'm not looking forward to that switch in my brain of turning on Mortal Kombat mode and turning sure, on Street Fighter sure. mode. Sure, sure. That um, sucks, right? When you have to go and like... Yeah. Get worse at one game to get better at another, but then you come back and you'll never be as good as when you left that one game. Exactly. And so playing Mortal Kombat after playing Street Fighter, I think will be a little bit rough. But just in general, for like story and narrative stuff, I think they're treating it in all the right ways. I love the characters that they're bringing in for this one between um, like the DLC, obviously, being Omni Man and, and like Peacemaker and those characters, but also in that DLC pack, I believe they had like. Quan Chi, and they also had um, uh, Takeda Takahashi, who's my main in Mortal Kombat X, who I really love, sure. who hasn't been back since. Um, and then in the story trailer, they had um, uh, Tanya in there, along with Baraka and some other characters. And yeah. they do, they, they're doing a good job of introducing the story as these different uh, groups and cl clans that are, hey, we are the, the Lin Kuei. We are like this group, right? And I kind of like how they're packaging these different characters because... They, I think they're doing a good job of allowing these individual characters to shine to like show them as part of like this specific unit. There's something about it that I think works for it. Um, so yeah, I'm excited for 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 Mortal Kombat. Greg, let's talk about Xbox. Story number four: A new Xbox Home update is rolling out. This is Wesley Yenpool at IGN. Uh, this makes sense. I saw Mike just tooling with his dashboard and dynamic themes. And oh, he just shit. does that. Like, how buying. desperate are you for content? <laughs> He's like, I'm just practicing for when Starfield comes out. I'm practicing <laughs> booting up games. Uh, Microsoft is rolling out a new home user interface for Xbox Series X and S and Xbox One. Microsoft said the new UI makes it, quote, easier to discover new games, rediscover games you already love, connect with communities, and create a more personalized experience, end quote. Highlights include the addition of a quick access menu, more space for your personalized background, and the option to change your background to match the game you highlight in the recently played list. The update also adds lists of games curated and personalized for users and lets users pin their favorite games, curated groups, and system groups like Quick Resume to the home screen. There's an updated friends and community updates, uh, updates row and a new watch and listen spotlight, which shows you which media apps and content are available. Microsoft said it's currently rolling out the new home experience to a subset of all Xbox consoles, which means some will have to wait a few weeks to get their hands on it. Oh, God. Greg's gone. Hello. Oh, I'm Mike, here. you get here? Oh, I'm here. Goodness. I heard him teasing me. Whoa. You know, I don't have many games to play on my Xbox, but I do have a new <laughs> Xbox dashboard to go play around yeah. with. And yeah, I was tooling around with it. Uh, I am part of the Xbox Insider program, so I have been seeing this over the months that they've been working on this. They've slowly rolled it out to different insiders, and we've seen them grow and evolve with this one, which is kind of cool now to today where we are finally putting it out to the public and i will say it is a big improvement of what it was right a lot of the big feedback was hey we have these awesome dope dynamic backgrounds but i can't see them because the tiles are 60 percent up the page yep. and they're massive right and i think the team really took that to heart and heard that and i am impressed with what we're seeing right now i do still think that it does take up a fair amount of the page when barrett showed off that video it's probably taking up 40 percent, so you can still see a good amount about your dynamic background, but like I can't have Master Chief as my dynamic background and have a pink needler shot coming in at his knee, yeah. but that's where all the tiles are, right? But I will say this. It is a good improvement. I do really like that quick access bar up at the top. Mm. I think that is really refined from what it was where Xbox has always been up to down in these recent years, right? Where you start at the top and you start scrolling down. It would go Game Pass into your store, into your media and onward. I really love that I just go up. Yeah. I have the four options right here. Click on and that, it, boom, that first and option uh, where you, is that the library? Like here, I'll show you on my computer. Is that right there? Is that yes, that is your game. Thank God. Apps. Thank God. Because yep. I hated. <laughs> okay, well, blessing. It was technically only two buttons down, so it wasn't that Yeah, but bad. like, why is it not, why is it not the first <laughs> thing that popped uh, up? Uh, my uh, games and library should be like one click away. Uh, I think that. Have you been on a PlayStation mic? <laughs> they have figured they that out. They stop hiding the achievements. <laughs> they have, Every time I go in there, I'm like, ah, oh, God damn it, how do I find the achievement list? They have heard that. They have taken your feedback to heart, and clearly they are working on that, which I do like mm -hmm. i will say i want to give another shout out i thought it was very interesting when i first turned on my xbox here today with that just received this update i really did like the themes of the game tiles right yeah. very similar to playstation where if i hover hover over final fantasy 16 kind of the whole game and bi dynamic background takes over and you get the music I could do without the music, so I do like that Xbox uh -huh. doesn't have the music. I mean, you know you can turn the music off on. Yes, but I, I just feel like it's very interesting that they went that route of like, 
oh, now we have the dynamic background for, you know, whatever game yeah. you're playing, Fortnite onward. So that was very cool. Of course, I noticed the moment that I changed it to my Master Chief dynamic background. It doesn't That's do that the, anymore. Yeah. So weird blend there, but I did really enjoy that. Um, like I, you saw on that one, I'll highlight it again, the quick access bar. Really, really well done. Dope. Going yeah, down. Quick access looks like what? Library, I assume that's store. Game pass. Game pass, a search function, and then yep, settings. Exactly. Which is how it should be. I think that is an excellent update. Uh, well done. Update. And then going down, of course, Xbox users have already used the functionality where you can create your own sort of pins and different game lists if you want. So I currently have one of like my backlog or currently playing, right? And so I use those of, along my homepage that I can go search and look for. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, just a nice small refinement, nothing massive if you've been using your Xbox every day, but something where if you use it every day, you're going to see this and you're going to go, okay, something new, something fresh. Let's give it a try. See what I can explore. Oh so, yeah. Good Is job there, to them. Uh, what's one feature that you still want for the Xbox homepage? <sighs> What's one feature that I still want for my Xbox homepage? I don't know. Let's see. What do I really want? I, I don't want anything. Bless. Triple A exclusive games. <laughs> <laughs> Starfield. Got it. Got it you know, man. Bless, that's a great question because I am such an easy user when it comes to the homepage. I have used Xbox for decades now. I am very aware of where the buttons are, where I need to go, right? And so I'm very quick of, I go to my games and apps. I click on the game I want. I download it. It's good to go. I never really flounder and fluster of what i really need okay and i am somebody that i don't spend that much time looking at my dynamic background i know i just talked about that but like i'm not someone who's like sitting there on the home page zoning out or like wants that to happen right so it's like yeah. for me it's easy i can just turn it off if there is one thing you know what i would like What's that? when your xbox goes into rest mode bless it is very interesting that it grays out the screen and then it will bring up a small kind of like vignette over on the right hand side or left hand side which yeah. is like one third sometimes it's the controller maybe it's an achievement i would like there for it to maybe go into like a sleep mode and maybe show like some of my screenshots or maybe go into mm -hmm. that full dynamic background and take over the screen so it does show it off and look cool like a screen saver i would like I love, them to I love that yeah elevate I my screen saver i guess is the only thing that i would have feedback on because i'm very basic when it comes to games i know where i'm going i know what i want to do I don't waste time or spend time dilly dallying. It's I'm here. We're good to go. Mm -hmm. I've talked about it on the X cast before. I love the storefront. I think this team has created a digital storefront that is almost a gamer's paradise. You know, growing up in the nineties and early two thousands, as you know, bless like going to blockbuster Friday nights was the best of times running through the movie aisles, looking at every single movie and flipping them on the back and seeing what was there going to the game sections and getting lost in that what they created in the Microsoft store feels like that but digitally i love being on the couch going onto that and having the trailer pop up and i can hear the sound or i can hover over a new video game and get lost in the screenshots like what they've done with the microsoft store for this new generation i freaking love and adore oh yeah I, I like that they're working on this i know a lot of people maybe aren't like me where they really do care about the xbox homepage we're never going to get the blades again. I know a lot of people are going to crazy. Like, Bring back Where's blades. my 360 blades? We're never going to get that blade. again. You know? Bring it back is a theme. Because now that's my thing with this new update is that now you have the openness to add uh -huh. themes. You know? And so like, give me fun, customizable, animated backgrounds that have music playing over, over. Let me tell you about the original Xbox dynamic theme background available right now. Yeah? Did you like the original flubber background way yeah, back I in did. the day? I love yeah. it. Guess what? It's freaking there. Oh, that's... shit. All right. Let's go. <laughs> uh, that is your Xbox Minute Mike, with Snowbike Mike. Goodbye. Right there for a second. Oh. Because story number five is that you can now Venmo new Xbox. Oh yes, this well, 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 we're, we're putting X cast stuff here yeah, with yeah. Mike hey, on we'll, here. We'll talk about yeah. it twice then. Uh, Microsoft is allowing Xbox owners in the U.S. to use Venmo as a payment option for games, movies, TV shows, and apps from the Xbox Store. The new Venmo, Venmo option can be used for Xbox Game Pass subscriptions with the ability to split payments. PayPal has long been supported on the Xbox Store, but the new Venmo payment option is part of a broader partnership between PayPal and Microsoft that also includes support for PayPal pay later option a way to spread payments over weeks or months the microsoft store in the u.s uk australia germany france etc now include paypal pay later support with an option to use venmo in the main microsoft store in the u.s too while venmo the paypal owned mobile payment service is typically used for sending or receiving money from friends is gradually becoming a payment option for online stores venmo support for the xbox store comes just months after amazon added venmo as a payment option for its own store mike you have a new way 
to spend money. Hey, uh, big thumbs up on this. I will say I really love my Steam Storm page where I use my PayPal account. I think it's much easier than grabbing my wallet, getting my credit card information, putting it all on there, right? Like, I know on the Xbox side of things, it is tied to my credit card and or debit card. I love the option of having my PayPal there ready to rock and roll and go with it. More options, the better for gamers. That's what Xbox has been preaching a lot lately. Of We're trying to give you all the options to meet you where you want to be. Another great tool, right? Oh, yeah. Talk about that storefront. They added the option of gifting games to your friends. I freaking love and adore that, right? I think that needed to be there day one. They added that. And so, yeah, I'm not a big Venmo user. I oh, think, I uh, am. I you use know, Venmo it, all. If it wasn't for me working at this company, I wouldn't have Venmo. Everybody forced me to get Venmo, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. When I try to hand, everybody would just cash. and they would If you hand me cash, I'm throwing it back. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it looked at me like I was nuts. Well, you don't, <laughs> no, it, it, it was usually the opposite. You would be like, I'm paying for this. And then we're like, well, <laughs> we want to pay you back. And you're like, I don't, I don't got Venmo. I don't got Venmo, and Jabroni. S- it is a good step, right? Because people are writing in there, I use Zelle, I use PayPal. Like, there's yeah. going to be more coming. But, like, good first step. I like this. Yeah. Good I know them. probably people in the UK are probably confused because they don't have Venmo over there. Yeah, over yeah. in your country, it's called Biscuit ex- Exchange. Oh. Biscuit Exchange, what you're they call so, it over in the UK. You're, so, you're so <laughs> world travel. No, it's not real. It's not oh, real. Man. <laughs> you got me there, man. I thought for real. I was like, oh, man. This no, he's so fucking well dunking on the, the British thing. I mean, oh, let's man. just start. For, let's just go back to the, the, the big issue, Bless. Uh-huh. Give us some video games. You know what I mean? <laughs> Put video games on the console. You know, you can open, open up your Venmo app on your console. Play around with that for a little bit. Story number six. Open up your mobile phone. Level up like I did. Just now, right how'd there. that go? Level 19. Level oh, 19, everybody. DC heroes and villains. I also found the invite code. I'm going to tweet it right now. Because mm. uh, if you, if four more of you use my code and get to level five, I get a little chest. Ooh. Are you going to tweet it while I read the story? Because I, I want to be one of the four. Okay, I'll, well, yeah, okay, I'll wait. I'll go for a core. I can read and, and join at the same time. This is a challenge. Uh, story number six, Futurama transport tubes uh, Bender, Leela, and Fry into Fortnite starting today. This is Rebecca Valentine at IGN. In celebration of the most recent Futurama revival, Epic Games has revealed yet another Fortnite crossover event that will bring Bender, Leela, and Fry into the game with new costumes, accessories, and a limited time weapon. Starting today, Fortnite players can purchase a number of new Futurama-themed outfits and accessories in the Fortnite item shop, including outfits and accessories to dress players up as Bender, Fry, and Leela. The various accessories include a nibbler back bling for uh, Leela. There it is! And Hypnotoad uh, back bling for Fry. Oh, hell yeah. As well as a Planet Express glider and a new emote themed after Zoidberg's iconic scuttle. Additionally, a new weapon will be added to Fortnite from now through version update 25.30. God damn, that's a high number. Uh, adding Bender's shiny metal ray gun to the game. The weapon also allows players to fire plasma infinitely or at least until it overheats and you have to wait for it to cool off. Um, here's my thing. Back in the PS2 era, when we'd get like Simpsons hit and run, right? And like great really cool, like, great games. Okay. Those character models always looked a little bit off because you're translating 2D yeah, yeah, to yeah. 3D. And uh, it's fun to see that that still hasn't changed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I honestly love it. Like I, I was the same. As soon as I saw Fry here, I was immediately taken back to hit and run. Yeah, no, they look like some Simpsons, Simpsons hit and run ass characters. But I love it. You know, like there's no great way to like really translate that art style to 3D. They look fucking weird, but also it's, it's, it's a really weird cool. charm, you know. Yeah, Bear, how do you feel about this? Because I know you're not you've not entirely been jazzed about the Futurama um, revival. Well, it, so it was interesting. Yeah, I, I, I felt like where they ended it ended it fucking ten years ago at this point. Jesus, um, felt like a good ending, and so it, it, it felt weird to keep coming, kind back. of keep coming back. Like I, I understand like the original, uh, like keep coming back uh, over and over again because they kept getting canceled, uh, and there felt like there was actually like a story to more story to tell there. But the last time they did it, it was like oh shit, they did it, um, and so that was it, it felt kind of weird and maybe a little bit more forced this time around. I did watch the first episode though for for season eleven, and I, I, I had a few chuckles. I, I had a few oh, laughs. Okay. It, it, like chucks. it brought me back to the you know just like. Putting that on, like, I remember Futurama debuting back in, like, fucking 99 when I was, like, four years old and watching that with my mom every Sunday or whatever. Um, and it, so it just it brought me back to those good times. I, I feel like the, the writing team and that crew has not missed a beat. I was also, like, 
there is that era where they're maybe recasting a lot of the cast, but then they mm. walked back on that because people were like, what the fuck? Pay your actors, man. Pay, yeah. uh, pay your well-known actors who became well-known because of these roles and are these roles. So, uh, But they walked back on that and stuff, too. So um, I, I had a fun time with the, the first episode this season. That's good so, to hear. Yeah. That's good to hear. And I'm like, deba- it, it's, it, this is the problem, Bliss. What's the problem? We got a problem. I feel like in my head like three weeks ago, I was like, all right, I'm breaking up with Fortnite forever. Mm-hmm. I don't think I'm ever going back. What? It's, just like, it's one of those things where we get into the beginning of a season, Greg. Then I pay 30 bucks for a fucking season pass okay. or whatever how okay. much it Fair is. Enough. And then we play for a week, and that's it. We're not, mm. we're not Joey and Kevin when it comes to this stuff. And even Joey and Kevin are barely like in it anymore, right? I just don't have the waves, time man. for Fortnite's it. Fortnite's rolls and waves are kind of funny. Where we're all in or we're all out or whatever. I just I can't now the waves keep doing Diablo. It. I Come join us. The water's it, great. Man. You can't the water's keep doing great. It. I don't care I it, enough Derek. about Diablo. This is me with Genshin Impact, where I realized that I, I was, it was breaking me. You have you have too many anime waifus that you have to buy. Ex- well, no, I wasn't buying them. Barrett, I'm not sure if you're aware. It wasn't about the waifus. It was about the open world. <laughs> it was very. There's vast. a new wave rolling in right now called DC Heroes and Villains. I got <laughs> blessing. Just got his surfboard <laughs> waxed down. Come join us. The water's fine. I just tweeted the link. <laughs> surfboard waxed down. Was that me? Well, we're jumping in the waves. He's you know you got to uh, wax your surfboard. Yeah, 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 okay, okay. Uh, okay. I thought also, that was like, I'm really, I, thought I won't, I won't lie to you. I can't tell you how pissed off I am. I don't have the X Cast hoodie within reach right now. I know. Fuck, I look like Damn a, it. I look like a I clicked your link and I got a Bless and I are going to look real cool when we go to the movies together later. Yeah. Oh, we are going. I keep forgetting we're going to the movies together later. Hell Maybe yeah. it's a one time use code, you think? Like I got to give the code four times, you think? Maybe. Interesting. But yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Store number seven. Play PlayStation Plus essential games have been announced for August. Oh, Mike. Promote the merch. XCast merch. It's really dope. We're recording the, X, the XCast. is recording live today, right? Patreon.com slash kind of funny in the afternoon. This comes from at PlayStation on Twitter. Uh, this month's PS Plus monthly games for August are going to be PGA Tour, 2K23, Dreams, and Death's Door. Usually I'd save this for an out today or um, a new dates or deals of the day. But Hold on. Pose. Everybody screenshot this. Remember, you can get this right now at kindoffunny.com slash old store. <laughs> we have too many of them, please. <laughs> I put I put this as like an actual news story just for the dreams part of it. Yeah. Because this is one of those. Hey, man, guess what? We're done supporting it. Yeah. So now you can finally have it. I'm like, you could have. Well, you should have done this years ago <laughs> with dreams. 100%. Uh, but, you know, it's cool that people can access dreams uh, when this happens. Right. Starting what, a week from now. Next week. Is next week the first? Yeah, next week's the first Tuesday. So yeah, download it next Tuesday. Play some Dreams if you haven't played Dreams. Check out a bunch of cool stuff. Play the main campaign of Dreams because it's really good. It's really short, but it's really good. And then yeah, check out all the really cool stuff that people made. Play there. Death's Door. And also, I guess Death's Door is on here too. Oh, I guessed it. Oh, I fuck, I forget that you weren't as high on that. Death's Door fucking like kicks it. ass. It's it's a it's a good video. If game. you want uh, a like a game. slightly type of Zelda game but with toughish combat, and you play as a little crow. It's fucking sick as hell. I love playing as crows. But Greg, the next game to put a crow as the main character is Crushed so it. far Crushed away. It. If I wanted to come out to Mom and Grab Shops today, where would I look? The official list of upcoming software across each and every platform as listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily Show hosts each and every weekday. Yeah. Out today, we got Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart for PC. The Expanse, a Telltale series for PC, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, and Xbox Series X. And then Juan Juan Sword, Miss Beyond the Mountains for PC. Uh, we've got an NVIDIA GeForce update for you. As a reminder, we've partnered with NVIDIA to keep you updated on all the latest GeForce RTX additions to your favorite games like Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart. Uh, NVIDIA has been hard at work with Insomniac and Nix's software to pack as many RTX features as possible into this game, like real-time ray trace shadows and reflections, DLSS3, NVIDIA Reflex, and NVIDIA's new feature, RTX IO. And speaking of, uh, we showed off a little bit of RTX IO last week with Nix's playthrough of Portal Prelude RTX, which helps reduce load time. Uh, for open world gaming, especially ones with a lot, a lot of portals and dimension hopping like Ratchet and Clank would depart, it is a huge improvement. And then finally, last week at Bill Billy World, uh, China's huge summer gaming event, a handful of upcoming titles announced they were adding DLSS as well. There's a title such as Wuthering Ra- Waves, uh, Synced, and Naraka Blade Point. So go check that out. We got some new dates for you. The Tikamoon Plains DLC 
4, Way of the Hunter, is releasing on August 11th. The Cosmic Wheel Sisterhood will materialize on August 16th for PC and Nintendo Switch. Overpass 2's release date has moved from October 19th to September 28th. And then Castlevania Nocturne premieres September 28th. We got one deal of the day for you, and it comes from Kebabs, who writes in to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD, just like you can, and says, this write-in is a deal of the day. This month, Twisted Metal 1 and 2 were added to PS Plus Extra. If you don't want to get extra just for them and have a PS3 handy, buy them from the PS3 store as PS1 Classics. Uh, you can then log on to your PS4 or 5 and download the modern ports of them for free. No PS Plus subscription required. This applies to any PS1 game on PS Plus that was also a PS1 Classic. It's how I got Toy Story uh, 2 on PS5 for free. There you go. Cheat the system. Right now it's time. Is anybody... <laughs> Sitting there, man. Like, I got, I, oh man, I want to play Twisted Metal one and two, but I am not gonna do the extra. Thing. I mean, now that P, that we know Twisted Metal on Peacock is fucking fantastic. <laughs> it's a TV show. Yeah, you're gonna have a lot of people. It's gonna be like Last of Us Part One, where we all went back and played Last of Us One. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Now, man, this Anthony Mackie show is great. We should really go play, play go the source material. We should see where this came from. They're gonna, yeah, they're gonna bust out their PS3, <laughs> download the PS1 classic, and then bust out their PS4 or five, and then go and play At the, the game Comic that Con way. Uh, screener for Twisted Metal. We had a sweet tooth cosplayer, right? Who was just a very nice man, mm -hmm. very very large. Uh, and the thing was, as we opened the doors for the room to fill in, him and I played Twisted Metal, uh, the the PlayStation Classic version on PlayStation Five or whatever. Mm -hmm. And like we neither of us had played that game in twenty years or whatever. It was a, it was not the best. Yeah, <laughs> I was ever, I like imagine. the crowd was like a Twisted Metal audience. They're like, what the hell? <laughs> like, oh, we can't do anything. Uh, now it's time for kindoffunny.com. So if you're wrong, we write in. Let us know what we got wrong as we got it wrong. We just got one write in fr uh, here from uh, Ash Ketchum. 132 says not a correction but there was a Futurama PS2 game and they sent over a link to the Futurama PS2 game Fortnite. and I opened it just to see like are they do the character models look exactly like they do in Fortnite and no they don't like they're they're more uh they're not sh cell shaded right they're more 3D um character models which look But I, everyone ugly. knows exactly what you're saying yeah. like you know what I mean for the Simpsons game the Family oh, yeah. Guy game I remember playing But I was just more I was just more so curious than anything yeah. of like let's see how things have aged and hey you know cell shading became a revolution for a reason damn although yeah there's this like on rails thing that they're doing as um the, what's the name of the guy with all the, like the with the weird mouth bear who's like a crab man zoidberg zoidberg yeah sorry they have zoidberg doing like an en endless runner situation here which seems pretty fun cool shout out to the futurama ps2 game. why not zoidberg uh greg tomorrow's host for kind of funny games daily are going to be me and tim and then friday's host for kind of funny games daily are going to be snowbike mike Who's not over there? That's Andy. <laughs> <laughs> and me. And so stay tuned for that. If you're watching this live right now, after the KFGD post show, the crew is playing some more Remnant 2? Nailed it. Yeah, Remnant 2. And so stay tuned for Andy, that. Andy, you liking that Remnant 2? Yeah, yeah he is. He Love says. It. He likes shooting things. Remember, this has been Kind of Funny Games Daily, each and every weekday live right here on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games and Twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games. We run you through the nerdy news you need to know about. Until next time. Well, I'm sorry. Breaking news. Breaking news. I just got this email. Greetings, Greg. Hope you're well. Fresh off of Monday's reveal of Minnie Mouse as one of Disney Speedstorm Season 3 competitors, Gameloft just announced that Daisy Duck will be racing to the track as Whoa. the second bonus racer. Let's go. <laughs> Holy cow. Austin Creed is stoked. Is he a, is he a big fan? Oh, yeah. He, he, oh, he Disney loved Speedstorm. It. He loves Disney Speedstorm. Yeah. Speedstorm. Yeah. It was what he was playing when he so came through Daisy for uh, Greg's uh, I bet he, you know, You know how he is. Mm -hmm. He probably is weird about Daisy Duck, too. I'm not going to put that on him. Why no, are you putting that on not. him, Greg? I'm not putting that on him. Are you calling him right now? All right. Well, we're going to get to the bottom of this during the post show. But oh, then I'm not time. calling him. I don't, I'm not going to waste a call on the post show. Then why don't you pick up your Are you playing more of that DC game? No, I was going to call him on the real show. Oh, on the real. Okay. We're going to call him on the real show. I think everybody gets access to this anyway. <laughs> Andy's coming out. Hi, Andy. How's it going? Well, thank you. How are you? I'm doing pretty all right. Kind of a tired morning, but the coffee finally kicked in. I think he's saying Austin Creed is probably like that because he loves like a uh, goofy movie. So I feel like mm, but like I everybody see where loves Greg is coming movie. from. <laughs> Up, up, down, downs. Austin Creed. This is Greg Miller from Kind of Funny Games Daily. You're live at the end of the show. I just want a temperature check on how much you care about Daisy Duck. 
period as a character and then second bullet point how much you care about daisy duck racing to disney speedstorm in season three update let us know sometime we miss you goodbye all right there you have it until next time it's been our pleasure to serve you fucking weirdo <laughs> <laughs> oh man i think a lot of people like the goofy movie bless but Austin, a lot it's of like love it. It's like part of his like personality. It's part of his thing. I would say, like, mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, didn't he like cosplay one year or something? I mean, yeah, he cosplays all the time. Yeah. weird shit. You know. Welcome in everybody for the kind of funny games daily post show, where we read your super chats with our super hosts. Hey, everybody. Hi, Andy. Uh, like how Ratchet is part of my personality. Says kebabs. Sure. No, see, that's the kebabs no. like Ratchet. <laughs> See, Kebabs, that's your only part of your personality. Mm. You know what I mean? Austin has a, a like a pie chart of different things that make him a big old weirdo. But yours is just Ratchet's face. No, I'd say I'd say Lord of the Rings is is part oh, of. Oh, you did a power line cosplay? Yeah. Oh hell yeah, dude! That's, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I learned Kebabs today. I uh, didn't know that Hypno Toad was from Future. There's Island. a there's a large. I literally Kebabs could tell you. The fucking history of a rock in a random screenshot of Ratchet and Clank. Oh, it came from a meteorite that it bounced off, you know, fucking whoever, Captain Insano's head. And then you show him anything else. He's like, I don't know what that is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He is an AI robot man programmed just to know this stuff. But it's wild robot to me that person. he knew what Hypno Toad was, just not what it was from. You know, when memes get popular, again, yeah, that's fair. As someone, since Kebabs only knows Ratchet and Clank, they don't really understand popular memes. Mm. Mm. A really cool action mm. figure. Let's read our first. I know, super I know chat. pretty large. I feel like there's a there's a pretty large, like very passionate Goofy movie fan base. Yeah, yeah. Like I know a lot of you that are fucking obsessed with Goofy movie. Not as uh, less uh, so, but extremely Goofy movie. Still killer though. Yeah, I agree. Not as big of an audience though. It's sad. El Capitan with a ten dollars super chat says, "Hopefully Andy is hosting the post show, but if not, how does everyone feel about Andy playing?" <laughs> Mihawk in the late in the live action One Piece from Miho to Mihawk. Congrats. I don't know who that is. Yeah, I don't know who that is either. Oh, one of these One Piece characters in the live action Mihawk. Let me I'll look up Mihawk. How would I I think it's like a M it's like Mohawk but with an I. Uh I believe. Do you think he has a Mohawk? Oh, you know, I can see it. Mm, mm. I can see it. Mm. Look at this. That's yeah. Andy Cortez. Yeah, right Andy, that looks like Andy. Yeah. His mustache doesn't connect to his beard. They do the thing, because uh, I saw the live action counterpart, and they did the thing that, you know, we were wondering, is Iron Man going to do this for... I don't think you have a, seen the live action counterpart for yeah. this character. Yeah. Yeah, we've seen him. Cause his, uh, because wow. what I was just mentioning is that they make the, uh, they make the facial hair look identical to this which is it reminded me of like tony stark back in the day mm -hmm. where we're like are they going to actually have the little two spikes that come out on tony stark's beard and then they actually did that in live action i was like how is that going to translate um that yeah i saw this dude the live action version and his mustache very pointed and very like kind of uh sharp and angular cool uh, is it this guy well i think that's just a cosplay but i uh, saw like a like a netflix mm -hmm. um yeah, I was going to say, I'm getting served a Netflix ad for it right now. Man, they're listening, bro. Oh, they're the, listening. this guy in the bottom left. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Okay. Yeah, so they like actually angular, made the facial That's hair wild, like, actually. real pointy and stuff like that. Very animated looking. Um, John Alexander with a $5 super chat. Will there be a screencast for the Adam Eve Invincible special? That's a great question. Uh, I had uh, no knowledge of that coming out over the weekend. I thought Invincible had a lot of different announcements with the two games and the stuff and yada, yada, yada. And there wasn't a, and I granted I'm busy and running around with the Ben and all that stuff. So I missed all of it. I got in on Monday and Tim mentioned it. And I was like, oh, he's like, yeah, if we were, if we had time, we'd do a screencast about it. But since nobody else has watched it, you mainly, Greg, I don't think we will. And then we talked about trying to do it later in the week, but I haven't heard anything about it. So I don't think we will. How long is it? An hour, according to Timmy. Oh, jeez, that's meaty. I mean, that's we can always meaty. try to fit it and we could cancel Secret Invasion. I'm done. Marco Micelli or Micelli with a two dollar super chat. Could one of you show us the Zoidberg scuttle? I can't. I don't remember what the time, Zoidberg right? scuttle is. Like, Greg's gonna try it. 
Oh, oh wow. Oh, that you gotta yeah. make the noise. Lobster. Yeah. Like, it's been a while since I saw Greg, like, do it one more time. One more time. Like a little lobster. You don't have to do it again. You might tear something. Whoa. <laughs> I think you are. I think you're nailing it. That was really good. Thank you. I mean, you do that for two dollars twice, a dollar each. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. I love to get some exercise in there. You're always out there balling. I'm out there scuttling. Mm -hmm. Um, might have inked my pants. I wanted to read while we're waiting some more super chats from our super chat out there. I wanted to read a comment from Fool's Gold, who resubscribed on Twitch for three months, four months total. It says AMC with Nicole Kidman greater than Alamo. How do you feel about that, Greg? I mean. We all know how I feel about Alamo Drafthouse as the my preferred movie watching scenario. The Nicole Kidman cinema piece of art they've created there. Like, come on, I'm not gonna talk shit about that. Okay. I like the pre shows at Alamo more, but in terms of like the no talking, no texting thing, those are always funny. But Nicole Kidman sitting there, tell me this is I, I am yeah. winded. Yeah, you can see it. I'm winded. <laughs> <laughs> the places we go to cry or whatever. Yeah, I've, I've started. Fool's uh, Gold says the Alamo popcorn sucks. Greg. Fool's Gold, you're just a fucking idiot. I don't even need to listen to you. Wow, 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 damn. Um, I saw cool. a tweet earlier. Bless. You're gonna tell me the truffle popcorn at Alamo sucks? Get the fuck out of here. And again, I'm not insulting Cinemark or AMC popcorn. Oh, do we unplug something? No, no, no. Oh, because <laughs> I was wondering why we're still in the gym and Bear walked out of here. <laughs> I was like, uh oh, I love Nicole. Bear, uh, Greg broke something in his scuttle. Um, also, I, I will agree with you. Like, I don't love watching things at Alamo, but popcorn kicks ass. Five dollars super chat from Marsh Hero says, "Greg, what's your current squad in DC Heroes? I've been running Batman, Robin, Nightwing, Enchantress, and Halo from the video game Halo." Yeah, no, I've been running Superman, Lex Luthor, uh, Vandal Savage, Batman, and Halo. Those are all five stars, with the exception of Batman. Lex Luthor, Savage. What'd you say? Superman, Superman, Lex Luthor, Lex Luthor, Batman, Vandal Savage. Van Halo. Who's Vandal Savage? Vandal Savage. That's he's, a cool he's name. Like a, he's an immortal dude. He, uh, a blessing. You know him from Legends of Tomorrow. Give him yeah. the old rundown. He's from the Immortals. Oh, I do. I do not remember the details. Of Cousins the of uh, Randall Savage. Cousin of Dante and Randall Savage. <laughs> Somebody in the chat put in earlier. Christian JPEG with a five dollar super chat says better uh, or Yo Andy, what Koei song did you start singing in your Final Fantasy video you just posted? I think it was Blood Red Summer because somebody else asked the question. Whoa, whoa, oh. Co op 64 with a $2 super chat. Better chance for a game of the year nom. Wow, this is a tough one. Yum, 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 Especially yum, yum. because we're talking about such a different era, which felt like three years ago, but it was really the beginning of the year. Better chance for a game of the year nom. RE4 or Dead Space? RE4. And does anyone, and do either one of those make the top 10? Are we talking about for kind of funny? For kind of funny, I think it oh, might be well, Dead Space. Interesting. Because when they asked Nam, I'm thinking of the Keeley six. Yes. That, I think they were talking about Keeley, but then I started thinking like at the beginning of the year, those games seemed like shoe-ins for the kind of funny top ten. Like those would be in our top ten collectively. I don't think either make Do it. Do either of them make it? No. I don't this, think so. Probably not. No. I think, I think they'll be voted for. Like those yeah. will be in the list of games that I shout out where I like to shout out every game that was voted for just to give everything love, but yeah, I don't think it makes Has anybody else played RE4 but me? That was my other question. Tim started it. Um, yeah. I played the first several hours and then decided I was going to save it for Halloween. So I'm doing the Did same the thing. I wanted that to be an October game for me. Yeah. I think for the Keeleys, RE4 has a chance of being nominated. Like, just a, ch a chance. I think for Kind of Funny's Top 10, Dead Space maybe could slide in number 10. Yeah. I got to the point where, that one, where the Undertaker guy, like... Choke slams you in the uh, mm. in the no, top. you're playing that's 2k23, man. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> then that was going in my top 10. My <laughs> All right, I had a mixed up. I had a mixed Darth up. Darth Dubia points out though, like October's busy. Y'all gonna have time to play that though? Yeah, yeah. You got, you got Alan Wake too. You got Spider-Man. Uh, Spider you, you got Mario. You got Mario. Yeah, but I have a feeling Ari, Ari I'll be shorter. I think I'll be, I think I'll be coming off Starfield. I want to play RE4 for um, Game of the Year consideration. So if I get there at the start of October, mm -hmm. right before Alan Wake, before Spidey. Let me go to kindoffunny.com slash calendar to open up. Wow. On game I mean, you tell me to start playing it right now. I'll start playing it right now. I hate, I hate it so much. I hate the fucking X, X. logo. He's such a fucking tool, it's dude. Terrible. Um, while Blessing's looking that up, I want to read one more question from CJ Splitson. Oh, Greg, you got oh, Cyberpunk. Greg. 
2077 oh. Phantom Liberty at the end of um, uh, September, September 26th. Yeah. That is trouble. That is trouble. And then let's see. October. Are you going to play Assassin's Creed Mirage? N no, probably not. No? Okay. I, no, I, I look at it and I go, oh, that's, that's a cool looking Assassin's Creed, but not where I'm like, I got to play that. You might have time at the beginning of October then. Yeah. You might be fine. And again, like what, RE4 is like what, six hours? Eight hours? No. I think like 15, yeah, 12. I think it's oh, way, really? Oh, yeah, okay. I think it's way longer than that. Oh. Trust me, whenever I'm playing a scary game, I look up how long it takes to beat sure, this game. Sure, sure. <laughs> like, how long can I really, uh, you know, just make my way through this in the most painful way possible. CJ splits on with a $2 Super Chat. Blessing Andy, chances AC6 makes your top five this year. I'm going to say zero chance. Wow. I Maybe 1%. Top five? Because I think I'm going to assume it's going to be my number eight. Just add, just throwing it out there. Mm. Random random throw out. I think you just all, think of all the other big titles. I think there's a 30% chance that it makes my top five. Because hmm. when I look at my top five now, like, I've, I've now... I only have four games written in my top five. Like, really thinking about... So it's your top four. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, Street Fighter VI, Hi-Fi Rush, Final Fantasy XVI. That's what my top four <laughs> looks like right now. I imagine... I mean, Star, I think Starfield's going to enter that. I got faith in Starfield. I got, I got, I got faith that, Star, that Hi-Fi Rush falls out of my top ten. Damn. I love. I mean, I love. I think I I love High High Fire Rush more than most of this company. I think it might be like me and Barrett that like are way more high on it. But yeah. um, Tim too. I think Tim really loves it. But Tim will get it a four out of five because he's a coward. Wow. Yeah, he's a coward. I'm biting the inside of my like up that to a five. My cheek a lot. Why? Oh, like I'm not a purple. by accident. And now it's getting more and more and extreme. Gets, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. it gets fatter and puffier, yeah. and it becomes more. Yeah. Of Dude, a I was eating with my tongue at Disneyland because we were walking around the whole day, and so like I'm, as I'm walking, I'm talking, and then I accidentally bite oh. my tongue. And then and when you bite it once, you just keep biting it. Over yeah. and over. So okay. By the end of the day, I'm just like, I'm, like, <laughs> I'm talking. Yeah, 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 yeah. Stuff, guys. So you cannot enter the ride with blood coming out of your mouth. <laughs> yeah, I mean, as I look at my top, as I think about my top five or whatever, yeah, Starfield, I think, has a chance in there. Spider-Man 2 has a chance in there. Um, uh, maybe Alan Wake 2 has a chance in there. Mm, interesting. But I'll also say Armored Core. Out of like, I think Armored Core 6 is right there as well. I think there's a 30% chance Armored Core makes it. What are you for games? Yeah. Let me voice is Andy's fat cheeks. So I'm assuming you're talking about my dumper. Let's do this again next year with all the games. Everybody release your games next year. Sparex. It makes them excellent. With a 22-month resubscription using Prime on Twitch. Thank you for your Woo. support, Sparex. Has Blessing seen the Genshin Matthew Impact? Matthew says Forspoken is in my top five, y'all. No joke. Matthew, that better be a fucking joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know you said no joke, but it better be a fucking joke. Uh, I'll never dead or else you're a fucking joke. Um... Sparex asks, has Blessy seen the Genshin Impact Fontaine Regent story trailer? Jesus, I refuse, a lot of work. I refuse. I refuse. I can't. No. Come back Don't to Genshin. Don't suck him in now. Don't suck me in. I love how Greg says come back as if, you, <laughs> as if he was ever in it. Come back, I just like, no, I just like people Aaron, playing the game. I'm going to need you to look play. up the Genshin Impact Fontaine trailer. <laughs> Chris JPEG. I just want to let me smell the cigarette. I just I don't want to take it. I just want to smell it. Became a nine month subscrip uh, a subscriber on the YouTube side. Thank you, Christian JPEG. Manny Bagel Boy Sanchez, 10 month or a $10 super chat says, Blessing, will you be going to watch Messi this year? That'd be really fun. I don't have any plans, but I would love to. Um, but here's the thing it's going to be really hard to get a ticket to one of those games. Oh, then they're very Messi, expensive. Yeah, Messi's going to bring in huge audiences they're like wherever triple the price he goes. Now. Yeah, and so it's like, is it even worth it? I don't, I don't know. I do want to watch the World Cup when it comes through uh, for the next World for the next like. Mm. Uh, FIFA World Cup, um, but we'll see. We'll see what happens with Messi. Cozy Bear, he's been killing it. By the way, I don't know if you've been seeing the clips. Oh yeah, his for his free kick goal in that first game, incredible, mm -hmm. incredible. Cozy Bear, with a two dollar and eighty cent super chat, says, "What do you typically enjoy for breakfast?" Oh wow, what do you typically? You know, enjoy Cozy Bear writes in all the time the kind of funny podcast, like. Like, we'll do seven questions at a time mm. to do that, right? And I, a lot of them make it to the sheet, but then we rarely use the sheet because we have such a good time out there just talking, Andy. What I want to do is I'm going to answer this question because I think it also one of his other questions was, what is the one breakfast you would eat the rest of your life? And if it wasn't him, somebody else wrote in or whatever, right? And I thought that was such a dumb question when I read it, and then I haven't been able to get it out of my mind since, <laughs> and I've <laughs> thought about it at length. And so it's the same thing. I love two sunny side eggs. Mm. Bacon, mm. toast, 
Now, if I'm at a restaurant, I get some hash browns or whatever. That's great, too. I'll, you know, I'm, I'm all about that. But it, like at home, usually it's the eggs, the toast, and the bacon if I'm doing that thing. And I love that so goddamn much that if I needed to, that could be my meal every day. Because it's that thing of, I'm lost water thinking about it. I'm yeah. not it's that I'm thing of, I could make it into a sandwich if I wanted to. Mm-hmm. I could just dunk the bread in the egg. I could eat the eggs all by themselves, the toast all by themselves. Maybe put some jam on the toast. I'm kind of playing with the rules, but I assume all the it's condiments are on the table. Right? Exactly, you can right? Do whatever you want. It, it's, and that's the cheat of I can do whatever I want with it. Damn. I am typically not somebody who ever eats breakfast. I always just eat a Belvita brec- uh, breakfast blueberry biscuit for the whole grains or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I never, I've never like actually. I've never been a fan of, uh, like, even when I go back home, my parents and my nieces and nephew come over for, their, uh, you know, for breakfast or whatever. My parents make French toast. I'm like, eh, I'm good. I'll, I'll pass on that. But I'd say, like, I mean, it's hard to not go with just, like, a, I'm such a basic bitch with it, but um, it's like waffles. Waffles are delicious. Yeah. Not, like not microwaved. Yeah, you're not micro. Not- micro, dude, it'll change your life. Bro. I'll tell you what, like the some- best. <laughs> like you're eating pillows. Your guy hates God, it. Soft. You're it's so, so gross. gross. It's so soft and fluffy. It's so gross. Andy, have we taken you to the the diner that's a few blocks away from us? Here? Uh, no, like from where Andy and I live. <laughs> Thank you. Wait, there's a diner. Sorry, I'm currently <laughs> googling <laughs> breakfast <laughs> restaurants on Google Maps because I'm about to say blessing. Your thing says answers email after this. Fuck it, let's go get some eggs, toast, and bacon. Man. <laughs> I could be down. No, I, 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 no, I would love to take you there because uh, when you're talking about waffles, they have fucking dude. I love waffles. waffles. My like the f- waffles that I had several months ago when me and Tim went to LA for the Final Fantasy thing and we ate waffles with Chris Anka. No. No, that was a different time. I'm thinking about when we ate waffles with me, Snowback Mike, Chris Anka, Kevin Ace X, the Spaceman, and James and Lise Williams. Mm-hmm. Like, the really kind of, like, snooty, snobby waffles. Yeah. Super expensive, Typical probably. L.A. waffles. They were probably, like, $50, I swear waffles? to God. Yeah, they were just, like, normal as waffles. But, like, mm. it was the powdered sugar oh, mixed yes. with, like... Having like oh, a couple of just like wedges of a, of a, a strawberry on top mm-hmm. with the syrup, dude. It was one of the best. And I was like, Bro, this I'm is why. Hype right now. I was like, this is why people eat breakfast. I get it now. Like yeah. it was one of the best. Like and little strips of bacon. Oh my. That's the tough God, thing for me dude. with this question is that I just love breakfast as an idea and a concept. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> it's my favorite meal of the day, and I'll eat breakfast for whatever meal. That's Here's something. That's something I'm an AI you. would spit out. I love breakfast as a concept. <laughs> as a con- <laughs> the concept and idea of breakfast. You're right on the money. Of yeah. like there, I, breakfast is probably my favorite meal and what i'm always heartbroken when we go out for breakfast and how fast the meal is over because like you go out for a dinner and you order you know what is it gonna be 10 15 minutes you're at a restaurant a diner or whatever I know what you, you order like literally you're like yeah you, if you're lucky they'll come by and you want drinks you had coffee all around yeah. they get they go get the coffee they put the coffees down what do you want and i you know two eggs and the bacon and he's like great he'll turn his back and somehow turn around with the food immediately yeah. <laughs> you're like, oh, yeah. you're like, god damn it i want to sit here and enjoy the goddamn yeah. moment um, we also had some pretty good French toast when we missed the summer game fest. Uh, oh, we had that breakfast. Oh, yeah. I, 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 got the, the French I didn't toast have the French toast there. French toast there was pretty good. Oh. One of but, the things I wanted to bring up that I started laughing at when you were talking about how, the snooty LA breakfast, mm-hmm. I was about to be like, oh, this has nothing to do with what I'm doing. Oh, I was about to be like, oh, yeah, you know, dunk on LA breakfast and make fun of James and Lisa or whatever. But then I remember you and like, I will never, ever, 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 ever forget. It was one of my favorite Andy moments. We went to the Alamo Draft House screening of Selena. Then we went next door to Foreign Cinema for brunch. <laughs> And like when we we left and you were so mad at how expensive it was and how little food you got for brunch. You're like I'm never going back there again. I was like, you are spot on that that was a bullshit brunch. I mean, look, here's the thing. I was never like I've never been a big fan of like the idea of brunch as a concept anyway. And really? like the whole waiting oh, and the dude. whole like it's I don't know. It's, a reason to drink in at eleven AM. But oh, I, and then I have a headache for the rest of the fucking day. Though. I, I have a headache for the rest of the goddamn day after like a couple of mimosas, whatever. But like mm-hmm. that was definitely not a like if you're like, no, Andy, I know you don't like brunch. You got to check out this spot. Mm-hmm. It drove me even further away from the concept of, yeah. of liking yeah. brunch. Mm-hmm. Um, but like yeah, the bear like, says fuck brunch. I yeah, so my answer to the question. spoilers for blessing. Yeah. My um like my, my breakfast rotates day to day sometimes season to season because like well it's whatever I, wendy's has got on the menu yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like right now i'm in my wendy's phase all oh, damn my- cinnamon toast sticks are back 
<laughs> on the weekdays right now, it is often Wendy's or the spot down the road that makes like these really good breakfast sandwiches. On weekends, when I'm cooking, when I'm actually cooking for myself, I'll often do just uh, breakfast, breakfast potatoes, bacon, and egg. If I'm like at a restaurant, man, I love to order biscuits and gravy. Oh. Egg. Biscuits and gravy is like fucking, it's like so fucking good. And I, I think that would be my breakfast that I would eat forever. If I can only choose one thing to eat forever, it would be, yeah, biscuits, gravy, eggs. This is the place I'm eyeing for us to go right after this. Oh, oh wow. Biscuits and gravy, fresh biscuits, sausage, gravy, two eggs. The best up is that I, I ate before the show. Like, I did get a breakfast sandwich. I'm willing to, like, <laughs> eat more. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. By the time we get there, it's 1145. That's true. Whenever you well, all maybe see. Maybe the coffee takes a little bit of time instead of just being there immediately <laughs> with the food. <laughs> <laughs> Take some time, everybody. Um, I need you all both to imagine in your mind's eye, in your imagination. I'm shutting my eyes and imagining. You know the tweet. Oh, and, and we can play fucking, we can play DC Heroes villains at the table. We don't have to talk yeah. to each other. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'll just do a Marvel snap, but maybe I'll think about it. You said you try it. I'll try it. I'll try it, I guess. Imagine the tweets that go out that say, what's your preferred bacon? Is it mm -hmm. one, mm -hmm. two, three, four, five, or six, or seven, oh, or whatever? <laughs> no, but it's like oh, the I least see, burnt, see, see. the least oh, cooked to oh, the most okay, cooked. Okay, okay, gotcha. okay. And like, I, you know, at the end of seven it is like, or, or zero is like the most raw, uncooked thing you've ever seen. Yeah. Seven is like burnt to a crisp. Like that shit yeah. is going to like crum crumble in your hand. You know what I mean? What is the one that you go for? I'm going for around a three. I want, okay. Yeah, I want a pretty flat. You, you went up to seven, you said. You, it's usually like six or seven. <laughs> yeah, I went through seven. It's a weird it's number, a weird, I feel like. Getting, I feel like nine. Let's pretend it's 23. <laughs> when it goes to six or seven, I usually go for like the four or the five. Yeah, I like a really kind of crispy. I like a crispy, but I don't want it burnt to a right. crisp. And like just like but, you do the thing that like pah, turns. But out I don't charcoal. mind when like parts of it are like maybe the edges yeah. are a bit kind yeah. of burnt-ish. Yeah, yeah, I mean? for sure, for sure. We're on the same page. I love that because you always see the same graphs for coffee. You know, yeah, like how black do you want your coffee? How like or or do you just want it to look like milk? You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I don't want that. Uh, Barrett, I'm about to drop something in assets. About to drop him something in assets. Um, Keaton NC. Keaton NC. Keaton NC. Sorry, my <laughs> computer went to sleep. Is it I did? Uh, Two dollars super chat says, "Haven't you all played the game Halls of Torment?" No, that sounds like a a sponsorship I get every day from like a mobile game ad. That's like, would you play this oh, on stream? Go. Halls of Torment. I'm top left all day, every day. Top left. Top, top left. left. I want, I want, I want. You it. want it like <laughs> sear. You want it to <laughs> pan and be like, flipped and be done. Like, I want, yeah, I want it like how LaCroix is fruit, like has it flavoring with fruit. I want, it, I want weird. you to like I'm think about cooking it. I'm and somewhere then give in that four minute, five minute range. Yeah. I'm, fi I'm yeah. five. I'm five. I'm yeah. five. Oh, this is six. But like, if you give me you six, really I'm like so crunchy. cool with it, to yeah. be honest with you. Yeah, you're like, going to eat. You give me Three six, minute? I'm still gonna munch the on that shit. The top left one, bless. What are you doing, dude? I want to hit you across the face with a fucking <laughs> flaccid cold dude, piece of I pork. I want to chew it and like, it, like to be ju juicy. You're like, am I gonna die? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> am I gonna get food like, poisoning from this? Sir, how do you want your your bacon <laughs> soggy, just like my waffles? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I want it microwaved. <laughs> I want salmonella. Give me like, give me <laughs> toss that straight to the yeah, micro. Dude. Uh, Wizdog, thank you for your my life. Thank you for your 71 months of support with Prime. Appreciate you, Wizdog. Shaw Doggy, 71 months says eggs are overrated. Wow, you're overrated. Shut up, Mike, on your alt account. Fuck out of here. <laughs> Rhodes <laughs> Runner with a 54 month. Man, everybody started attacking <laughs> Shaw Doggy. 54 months. I, from I want Rhodes that bacon Runner. to still be oiking by the time I'm eating it. Still <laughs> <laughs> uh, alive. Resub into uh, to help bless afford a toaster. Thank you, Rhodes oh. Runner, for your 54 months. Thank you. Gerardo is cool. Five dollar. Super Chat says, Andy, what's your favorite Mexican breakfast? Huevos Rancheros and Chilaquiles are fire. I, um, I'm i super basic. Again, I grew up allergic to eggs, so I never got acquired. I never acquired the taste to want eggs in the morning. <laughs> Every breakfast was like eggs and bean tacos, eggs and potato tacos. I always just like a normal potato or a normal bean taco. Delicious. Oh, my God. So good. Faint aphid. 73 months of support says, how the heck do you turn off the hints in DC heroes and villains, Greg? You can't. It sucks. I agree. You can't. Because it'll do that thing where, like, you know, the gems will move to show you that there's a match there if you sit at the mm. screen too long. And I immediately that's, match I one, trying to turn that shit off, and it couldn't. It's not there. But the good news is that it doesn't give you the best match. 
It'll do it, so you can if you like you can ignore it and look for a better match, which is what I do. <laughs> what kind of chart? <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is kind of what I'm talking about. I would go for four right there. Like, We're looking yeah, at a chart of bacon, and number six yeah. on it is just ash. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I want two. I want Out of this, I'm I mean the two. Oh my god! Here, I'll send this to Barrett. I'll um, the final subscription. It's the, the final, final notification, notification subscription for this super chat with our super hosts is from none other than the indie boy with eight. 80 months of support with Prime. Okay. It's wild seeing triple digits up in here. Yeah. I saw uh I saw a freaking a couple triple digits earlier. Number four all I'm day. I'm going number bro. two on this, man. If you give me number five, though, I'm I'm not mad. I might, yeah, I, I might I consider would, number one. I would do three probably here or a four. But consider number one? That <laughs> just came I'm out not, of the I'm fridge. <laughs> <laughs> that just came out of the fridge, bless. Listen, that man. hasn't even hit the pan yet, you fucking <laughs> sicko. <laughs> I'll go number two. If you look off to the left, the the pig is still there, like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you shave that off me? <laughs> uh, one more super chat from Oscar Navarro says, anyone kind of funny interested in Blue Protocol? I played it at Summer Game Fest. You did? Can we talk about it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I didn't play it at Summer Game Maybe Fest. I was mistaken. <laughs> Maybe I was mistaken. I love Blessing turning to me <laughs> and the fear that I felt as well. <laughs> Thanks to you, everybody, for uh, uh, asking questions and paying. Appreciate you all. <laughs> Thanks for being here. We'll see you next. Stay tuned because we are heading into the lab to continue our... <laughs> Our playthrough <laughs> of Remnant 2, everybody. We'll see you all in a bit. Love you. Bye.